Let's move on to main topic number two. And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by Ashley M., who writes, John, you mentioned we could see Joss Whedon back in the MCU to direct. With rumors of John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic and Peyton Reed doing Ant-Man 3, do you think Whedon might be the one to direct the Fantastic Four movie? Thanks for all your hard work. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, Ashley. And yeah, very a lot of people... Very excited about Fantastic Four, like as that we've been uh, speaking of Josh Trank, that we have been excited about time and time again and time and time again for various reasons we have been disappointed. But we are very excited about this again. Yesterday we talked about how John Krasinski seemed to tease the audience a little bit. Everybody wants to see him and his incredible wife as Reed Richards and as Sue Storm. Everybody wants to see it, all that kind of stuff. But one thing that's been kind of interesting here is. I have said before, and I still to this day, if, if I had to take my pick, and I don't like doing the which X director to direct X movie, but to me, there seems to be a common sense element to getting Peyton Reed to direct a Fantastic Four film. He was going to do one before. His sensibilities that he's shown with Ant-Man, I think, translate well. Not to mention, I think there's a slight chance they might even introduce Fantastic Four in Ant-Man 3. I don't know that. That's just me speculating as a fan. That being said, um, we've also talked a bunch about Joss Whedon in uh, in in the last year or so, partially because you know after Ultron, which just kind of destroyed him. I mean, he was physically, mentally, emotionally just exhausted after all that. He walked away. I think there was some little bit of falling out between himself and uh, and Disney. You know, you got to remember too, Joss Whedon was Kevin Feige's guy when Kevin Feige needed to have the first Avengers movie made. Because I'll tell you right now, you may disagree with this, and that's fine. If that Avengers movie doesn't knock it out of the park, we do not have the MCU today that we have. Just that simple. Like, yeah, we had a good Iron Man movie. We had a really good Thor movie. We had a really good Captain America movie. But that thing of doing Avengers is something we had never seen before like that. And if that's not knocked out of the park, the MCU as we know it today would look very, very different. Joss Whedon stepped in there and crushed it and made what I still believe is the greatest comic book movie of all time. He was such a favorite of Kevin Feige. You have to remember this, that Kevin Feige, whenever Kevin Feige had any problems with any of his MCU movies, he would notoriously get Joss Whedon on the phone, said, I'm sending the Disney plane for you. They would fly in Joss Whedon to, on the spot, rewrite some pages of scenes to punch them up. Thor, The Dark World, which some people consider to be the worst MCU movie, every scene that's remotely redeemable and enjoyable about that was rewritten by Joss Whedon on the ground, on location, because Kevin Feige flew him in to do some emergency last-second rewrites. That's how much Kevin Feige relied on Joss Whedon. Then there was apparently some kind of a little bit of a falling out. And then what happened is a few years passed and all of a sudden I started noticing at these various Disney events like this one at Rogue One, Joss Whedon started showing up again to all these big Disney events. And he was there. And then on the, I believe it was the Infinity War. It was either the Infinity War, or the Endgame uh, Blu-ray and special features that they had this director's round table of all the very, of a bunch, not all, but a bunch of various MCU directors and lo and behold, Joss Whedon was there and all that kind of stuff. And I've been saying for a while that I believe that at some point, maybe sooner rather than later, we're going to see Joss Whedon return to the MCU and direct another MCU movie. I, I have not made this a story before because I cannot, I don't even know how much confidence that I have that this is true. So let's just be very clear about that. But I have been told in the past two months that conversations with Joss Whedon regarding Fantastic Four have occurred. Again, I don't know if that was just conversations of, hey, let's, let's talk about this. Do you have any ideas? Hey, what would your take on this be? Casual or, Josh, we're really thinking about having you direct Fantastic Four. Would you even be interested? Because he's just been doing a lot of smaller stuff. And by the way, Joss Whedon's got a really interesting new series coming to HBO uh, called The Nevers, 
uh, that he's working on. And I, I, the, the description of the Never sounds fantastic. Listen to this. An epic tale following a gang of Victorian women who <gasps> find themselves with unusual abilities, relentless enemies, and a mission that might change the world. And as soon as I hear that, I just think, well, that sounds like a Joss Whedon project. That sounds awesome. If, if, if I've ever heard of one. Mm-hmm. So he's got that that he's working on as well. Um, but I, I thought it would be interesting. Now, let, let me be clear here. My if it was up to me, my first pick to direct Fantastic Four is still Peyton Reed. I, I just think Peyton Reed is an inspired choice to do it. But you can get anybody else and maybe it will end up being Joss Whedon. One thing that I hear, though, sometimes, and and this to me is like one of the most mind boggling things I I, I can possibly think of. There are people who don't like Justice League, and that's fine. There are movies that I don't like, and that's fine. There are people who don't like Justice League. I did enjoy Justice League, but I've uh, up until Harley Quinn, I've enjoyed all the DCU movies, uh, including obviously Man of Steel, which I love, uh, Batman versus Superman. I like Justice League. I mean, here's the thing, though. I think people really underestimate what Joss Whedon was able to accomplish with Justice League. What Joss Whedon did on Justice League is nothing short of absolutely Herculean because here's the situation that everybody just forgets about. Now, I know there are a bunch of Snyder Cut fans and blah, 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 anything that wasn't Snyder sucks. Okay, I get that. (laughs) But, and it's okay if you don't like Justice League. That's perfectly fine. There's movies I don't like. There's movies you don't like. It's all good. But I think what people fail to realize is that the Justice League circumstance was so unusual. Understand this. The Warner Brothers executives decided that the Justice League movie that Zack Snyder was making was not the movie they wanted. Agree or disagree, good or bad, that's perfectly fine. But the fact of the matter was, the movie that Zack Snyder was making was not the movie that Warner Brothers wanted. And maybe they were right or wrong to feel that way, but it is what they felt. So they turn to Joss Whedon and go, hey, Joss, you know this movie that was practically done, that was like like 80% done? Yeah, we want you to come in now. We want you to completely change it. You've got this amount of time to do it, and you have to make it fit in with everything else that we've already done, and you got no time. Go, 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 go. Do you realize how ridiculously impossible that is? Do you understand, and can we wrap our heads around, how unbelievably Titan-like it is to do that at all? And by the way, And we can agree or disagree and like it or not like it, that's fine. But he ended up making a movie that was better audience rating than Batman versus Superman was and had better critic rating than Batman versus Superman did. And it's a movie that has its issues, make no mistake about it. All I'm saying is you take almost any other director in Hollywood and you drop them in a situation like that, that movie's going to become an unmitigated disaster. An unmitigated disaster. So what Ron Howard did with Solo and what Joss Whedon was able to do with that, it's okay if you didn't like Justice League. It's okay because, I mean, it's a movie. We all have different opinions. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. That's fine. But even if you didn't like it, you have to nod your head and say, yeah, that was a near impossible set of circumstances, though, that Joss Whedon walked into and he was asked to be a messiah of something and he had to do the best he could with a limited scope of freedom and limited time to try to remake something from scratch that the studio suddenly wanted different. And there are people who inappropriately blink. Guess what? It wasn't J- Joss Whedon's fault that it didn't turn out to be the Zack Snyder cut. It was WB who didn't want the Zack Snyder cut. They didn't want it. And if it wasn't Joss Whedon, it was going to be another director. And I'm going to tell you what, it's a 99% chance, maybe 98% chance that if it was any other director other than Joss Whedon, man, that movie would have turned out worse. And I think that even if you don't like that cut of the movie, you have to take a knee and say, hey, dude, what you pulled off, given the circumstances, is damn impressive. It's damn impressive. So listen. If they announce that Joss Whedon is directing a Fantastic Four movie tomorrow, I'm all for it. It fits his sensibilities. I would still rather see Peyton Reed. There might even be a couple of other directors I would rather see in front of Joss Whedon on that line, but he's one of those directors that if he was going to do it, I would be all for it. So that's my take on it right now. Aaron, (laughs) as somebody who's, you've worked, you've acted in Joss Whedon-related properties, 
Um, and, and you know, you know, when you're looking at big projects like this, what would you think of a Joss Whedon directing a Fantastic Four? Or are you are you like me? Would you rather see Peyton Reed? Would you rather see John Krasinski himself direct it? Where, what are your thoughts on this right now? Okay, well, since you brought it up, I'm just gonna tell a quick little story about the first. So I, I did a couple episodes of Dollhouse many, many years ago. Um, and that was how I ended up meeting Stephen tonight. And that, you know, ended up moving into Getting Spartacus. Getting on Spartacus, yeah. Right. Um, so I knew who Joss Whedon, I knew who he was, but I, I'd never met him and I didn't know what he looked like, um, even though I had met him multiple times at Comic-Con apparently. And so I was about to walk in, you know, whenever you're on a lot and you're going into a stage, there's always two doors. You open the first door and then you're in a little room and then there's a second door. Um, it's just so that, you, you know, you don't walk in while they're in the middle of a take. And so I walked in and I was waiting in the little room and then this guy walked in and he went to walk into the main stage and the light was on and I said, oh no, 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 the, they're, they're rolling. And informed this person in a very nice way, but um, he kind of looked at me and he just goes, oh, okay, sure, okay. And he waited. And then afterwards I realized that, that was Joss Whedon and that was the show that he was the executive producer of and I felt like a big asshole and a complete idiot uh so i was like okay don't ever tell someone they're rolling because they're probably going to be the executive producer and they know what that red light means anyway um i think that this is a great opportunity for us to see joss whedon back in the driver's seat of a big a, a, a big film like this and you're right it is a an incredibly challenging position for anyone to be put into when they're taking over a role for someone, whether it's as the director or someone taking over an actual role for a previous actor that had played that. You know, they're always going to be coming under the shadow of the previous person, Zack Snyder, in this situation. And fans continuing to say, well, what would it have been like? Well, what would have, you know, could it have been better? Could it have been worse? We don't, we'll never know about that. Um, I also like the fact that he's been quietly kind of sneaking back into the scene. You know, we've all had relationships, whether they be romantic or with family or friends or business that go sour and that somehow end up building themselves back into, you know, a positive relationship and I like the fact that this relationship has been one where instead of just saying okay after this big break we're now just going to commit to this big film together Joss Whedon has slowly been like all right you know what I'm going to show up at this event I'm going to make sure that there's no drama there's no craziness okay I'll you know help out with this little project he's been slowly inching his way back in there to make sure that the waters are clean and fresh and smooth and uh, and so I think now him jumping into a directorial position with a big feature like Fantastic Four is a great idea, and I'm excited to watch it. Also very excited about this show, The Nevers. That sounds yeah, great. I, I think that sounds actually really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, again, what I, what I want to make sure I'm very clear about here is this. Like, again, going back to the Justice League situation with Joss Whedon, I believe he saved that film. Now, that doesn't mean he made it a great film that you needed to like it and all that kind of stuff. Not at all. Maybe you thought it was a poor film, and it's it's cool. It's fine to think it was a poor film. I certainly think the film has its problems. But again, if you go understanding the circumstances, he didn't pull the plug on Zack Snyder's Justice right. League. Warner Brothers did. And then they turned to Joss Whedon and said, ha, hey, you practically have to do this whole thing from start, but make it fit in with all the other stuff was there. And oh, by the way, you've only got this much time. And oh, by the way, you've only got this much budget and mm -hmm. go. Listen, this movie ended up having a higher critic rating and a higher audience rating. The audience rating on Batman versus Superman was something like 63 or 64%. The audience rating on Justice League was 71%. Not that, not that you should really rely on audience ratings because they can be very dis mis misleading. I, I agree with that. But the critic rating was also significantly higher, even though it was still not a good critic rating. So again, all I'm saying is, I think Joss Whedon saved that movie from being an even bigger disaster. Like it was a movie that still ended up breaking even, could have lost them hundreds of million dollars. It's a movie that more of the audience liked than the previous one. Maybe that's fair or not fair, but all I'm saying is it's okay if you don't like it, but even as somebody who doesn't like that movie, and even as somebody who doesn't like that Warner Brothers removed Zack Snyder from the film, and even you can be all those things and still acknowledge, wow, not many directors could have stepped in and done with Justice League under those circumstances what Joss Whedon was able to do. And I think it could have turned out, when you look at how much of a train wreck that whole situation was, 
I think you've got to acknowledge that is a movie that could have gone worse a million different ways. And that's why I, when I make the statement, I'm, when I say Joss Whedon saved, um, saved Justice League, people think that means I'm saying he made it the greatest movie of all time. No, no, he didn't. But man, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. And that's kind of my feelings on it. But anyway, guys, I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of very different feelings on that. Jump down into the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. All right.